Hey, Herr Max here. In this video, I'm going to try to answer a simple question. Is OpenSUSE Tumbleweed the right distribution for your usage? Let's get into it. As always, let's start with a little bit of context. As you know, I've been participating in a challenge about Linux Mint last month. And what we have been doing with a group of friends, we have been installing Linux Mint as a daily driver on our PC and try to see if Linux Mint was adapted to the Linux beginner and also if Linux Mint was the end game uh, distribution for us. If you want to know everything about our experience with Linux Mint, I made a series of videos, of seven videos on the channel. I really invite you to, to go there and look at them. But the idea here is that I'm going to try to replicate this type of video for OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. The challenge right now is going to be me using Tumbleweed as my main daily driver for the, the next four weeks. Spoiler alert, this distribution has been awesome, but it's a little bit complicated coming from the world of Arch. But before we jump into that, let's talk about OpenSUSE and Tumbleweed and why I choose this distribution for this challenge. One of the drawbacks of Linux Mint was the fact that it was not a rolling edge distribution. And by that, I mean some of the packages were really old and trying to find the latest packaging was really, really a, a big pain. So when you look at OpenSUSE Tubbleweed, this distribution proposed what they called a stable rolling edge uh, distribution of package. So I, I, I don't know if it makes sense for you guys, but the idea is like they have what they call the open QA automated test for operating system. And when the new packages arrive on their end, they kind of like test them internally. And depending on the results, they're going to push those packages to uh, all the other users. So on paper, you're going to be like between, I would say like two weeks to one week late compared to the packages you will receive on Arch. They are supposed to be curated by the OpenSUSE team. From the other video I watch on YouTube and the other like common sentiment is that it makes the rolling distribution super stable. So we'll see, we'll see how it works on our hand if we have some type of crashes or anything. So Tumbleweed is their flagship release. You have two other like distribution, I believe they, they are pushing over there. They are the Leap one, which is like the release based type of, of release, like which is supposed to be stable. And they released a new version of it every year. And they have the micro OS distribution, which is their immutable type of, of distribution. So I'm not really into that too. So obviously we're going to go with the Tumbleweed one with the flagship for, for the reason I mentioned earlier. What I'm going to share in this video is my first impression of the installation, what I've been through because I'm an NVIDIA GPU owner and my overall impression after the, the, the first time installation. So to be super clear, this is the first time I installed Tumbleweed and the way I'm going to build the series of videos are going to be totally different from the Linux, from the previous Linux Mint. It's going to be more a coverage of my overall experience and I won't go in it as a tutorial. It's more going to be like impression, what I had to go through and what you should expect from um, an advanced user point of view if you install this distro. So when it comes to images, you have a lot of options for Tumbleweed. I went for the network image because this is the one I use with Debian. I'm, I'm really fan of this approach where they just download all the packages from internet and you finish with a system which is up to date after the install. And I was really curious to see how it will go. As you can see, they have a lot of of platform available, which kind of surprised me. And you will see, you're, you're gonna be really surprised by the installation process itself, at least I was. I did download it, put it on my Ventoy key, launch the install. But before we jump there, I wanna show you, they have also like live distribution you can try. 
And the image are, are pretty small. It's, it's, it's pretty enjoyable, I have to say. And they also have like the minimal virtual machine ISO. From the get-go, just looking at the way they provide the ISO, I felt like it was super professional. Like it, it gave me this feeling about OpenSUSE being professional. We are at, at a level which is for me like the the Fedora or even like Red Hat type of approach, which is super square. You have everything available, clean in a lot of like different architecture. Hey, this is really good, guys. Now, is the installation following uh, the presentation? We'll see about that. So going through the installation, I didn't have really issue, I would say. The install was pretty smooth, I have to say. The way the first boot go through is actually surprising because the installer will update the kernel and restart the, the, the whole install process. I was kind of like surprised by it. It just works and every, everything went well. You can also customize the installation, which was something I did. So pardon me, but I really like having my screen dark and I, I kind of like I like this option right off the bat it would give you the opportunity to choose the different repo you need it was pretty smooth overall you then arrive to a page where you kind of like choose the role of the system those options push me in a direction which was kind of like satisfying for me because it, it, it pushed me in this idea that this distro was more professional than the other distro which are out there. It makes me think like a Debian experience where you choose if you want to build it as a server or if, if you want to build it as a, a desktop environment or a transactional server. I have to say th this was pretty impressive. And the way they push the information to you is pretty clear. When it comes to the selection of disk, partition, uh, file system, I, I felt like the overall... Um, options were super clear no problem on this side i believe like a, a new user wouldn't have any issue going through them they also have like those screen where they propose you the layout for partitioning making sure everything is clean i look at them everything was nice and super concise in my opinion i really like the vision they have in the installer then you arrive at this clock and time zone screen which kind of surprised me too, because there is this little like uh, option called hardware clock set to UTC. This option, most of the time, they are available on the server and not on the desktop. It's kind of like a, a, a nice little approach to, to let you choose if you want to go UTC or not. I will always go UTC for uh, the time of my BIOS because it kind of like reduces the, the, the issue you could have when you switch from summertime to winter time uh, then you go to the new user creation they are nothing crazy but it, it does a job and then you, you you jump into the install you have like some type of like a little bit of a recap to make sure everything is okay you can activate some of the specific security options there but i have to say everything was super clean and super smooth the only drawback I have to say was downloading the packages. So let me explain. I had to download like 4.6 gigabytes of actual packages. And let me tell you, I have a, a pretty solid connection, but the download was limited to 50 megabytes per second. So it took me almost like 13 minutes to download the packages. And this, and you will see like in, in the next video because this is just a recap of the installation and my first impression of the operating system uh, this this is for me a recurring issue i have toward open downloading packages is slow so i don't know guys if you have any type of solution to increase the speed of download i didn't find one yet so if you have one please let me know in the comment below but downloading packages is slow on OpenSUSE. I'm like, what the heck is going on there? Outside of that, the install went well. It did reboot. And then I decided to just jump into the desktop and everything went well. So to my, obviously, to my surprise, they don't install the NVIDIA driver right away. So you're going to be pushed on the nouveau uh, <laughs> type of experience, which is not the best to say the least, but no crash stable you arrive on the desktop my first thing was to to go on uh, firefox and see how i could install the driver so when you come to the instruction 
And they have really like two big paths. They have the easy path and they have the hard path. So obviously, you know me, I'm pretty lazy. I went for the easy path. I just added the repo and then like installed the driver related to my graphic card. Rebooted and everything was all right. My graphic card was installed and I had a really nice experience out of the bat. Well, when it comes to installing OpenSUSE Tumbleweed on your uh, PC, I don't think it's hard at all. And I would say from a beginner standpoint, if you just like rewatch this video and go through all the installation process, I don't think it could be a real issue. You just have to follow the guideline for installing the NVIDIA driver, which are not even hard in my opinion. I will drop the link of the official OpenSUSE wiki for installing the NVIDIA driver. I, I did use it. I don't see why you could not use it. I believe the way they word their wiki is pretty straight to the point and you won't get lost there, even if you are a total beginner. Now, I'm going to continue this challenge because as I mentioned as earlier in the video, it's going to be a one month challenge. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a video like that where I explain what type of experience I had in the, in the future. And if I need, like, I need to share some of the command I had to use or some of the really like problem I encounter. I'm going to share that to you guys. So uh, please, if you are interested in this series, don't forget uh, to give a thumbs up to this video because it helps the channel like crazy and also subscribe because I, I don't know how many videos I'm going to have to uh, produce for this specific challenge, but I have planning at least like one or two. So if you don't want to miss them, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, yeah, uh, that's all for this video. Like open uh, SUS Tubbleweed Challenge is now starting and we'll see how it goes in the future. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.